Welcome back to the Bearded Garage where we're uh, doing the third part of fixing a 1.8T Volkswagen Jetta. Um, I've got the head out on the table here. You can see I've actually cleaned it all down, um, but we were able to determine uh, what the problem is here. So I think in the last video I showed you, I think it was a valve spring, but um, so what it did is I compressed this a little bit. I was able to just push down on it and I got the keepers out. So a keeper, if you're not familiar, my keeper is this, focus, is this tapered piece. Okay, so the tapered side. So see how it's, it's tapered one way. Uh, so it would go down like this. Um, the valves on the top, the valves actually have um, these lips, which um, that's where the keeper fits into. But my point is, now we're going to actually take it apart, pull that keeper, and then pull this top off. And then just using a magnet here, I'm going to pull the spring. So I can show you what I found. That is what the spring looks like. Now, let me compare this to the new one and show you the major differences. One of these things is not like the other. So, that is what causes low or no compression in cylinder one on this car. Um, so I mentioned there were um, ridges on the top of the, um, the uh, valve itself. So you can actually see, and this obviously goes up and down. Um, and that is what the keeper sits in. And the pressure of the spring pushing up against the cap actually uh, keeps the keepers in place. So that's really all it is. So uh, now you know what the problem is. All right, to give you a little bit better view out on the table here, these keepers... So I said they're tapered. So what they do is they fit in these grooves right here. Oops. With my big fat fingers in one hand, it's not very easy. So they sit in right like that. See how they're tapered? When you push the spring down, that keeper is held in place by this, pushing up and holding that in place. Next thing we're going to talk about is this uh, case. Um, it took a while to get, actually, from Amazon. I ordered it, and they lost it, and it came again. So what I'm going to do is this is a this is like a $50, $60, $60 case, um, and for compressing the valve springs. The problem here is once I drop a new valve spring in, Right, um, I have to compress it in order to get the top on and then the keepers in place. So I'm gonna show you how we do that. That's actually done with these guys. So we're essentially gonna build our own um, bolt down uh, spring compressor here and should be uh, should be easy. I'll just show you how it works. All right, show you where, where I'll, I'll link this kit in the description. All right, here is a... Um, is a valve spring compressor. I think it's a universal model. Um, so what I did is um, I just took a couple of uh, uh, screws that actually fit into the head here, um, and I, I just screwed it down. It's not super tight, just finger tight, really. Not much more than finger tight. Um, I put a bolt across the, or this, this pole across the top. Also came in the kit. And the goal would be um, is to put this in and then pivot it in place. Um, the pivot that you get... Um, I'll show you here. In fact, I'll put the spring in. So the spring goes in with these lines on the top, I think. I put this cap on. All right, so the goal here, so you can pivot it there, right? And the goal here would be you line it up with the cap. Press down, and as you can see, as I press it, you can see the valve, the top of the valve come become available. Um, once it's available, you just slide the keepers down there. So I've got one hand doing this. You right, see the valve come up there. So I got one hand doing this, and the other hand sliding the keeper in place. And that should be all that's needed to put this back together. After pushing down. Sliding the keepers in place, release the spring, and you can see both keepers held in place here. 
What's nice is if I come back over to any of the other, the others, I get exact duplicate. So looks like that is installed properly. We got the spring back in. I'm going to take all this stuff back off. Um, we can actually start getting ready to put the head back on. Before they put the head back in, I went and cleaned it up. I got myself, looks like about a gallon of acetone um, and just a rag. This was clean when I started. And all I did was just keep buffing this uh, elbow grease and I did it all throughout. Um, occasionally for the heavy duty stuff, I'd use a razor with a little bit of acetone um, and she came out pretty nice. Um, don't, you know, I've, I've seen, some people will say use a scotch bright, some people use sandpaper, I, I don't know. I don't trust that stuff, I don't trust the surface. I did the same thing here and I've actually uh, even uh, cleaned off the top of the cylinder block so the mating surface will be nice. Now I'm ready to start putting this whole thing back together.